Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy. Believe it or not, it's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called The Email Marketing Show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Jamie Lieberman, host of the UnBusiness Podcast. In each episode, we talk about the issues that face every entrepreneur where business and legal strategy intersect. Subscribe to the UnBusiness Podcast today. It'll make your business that much smarter. Just visit hashtag-legal.com or search for the UnBusiness Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. On this episode of Winfluence, what do you think the keys that that you think will help brands do that in the coming years? What do they need to focus on to have not just successful partnerships, but stand out as strong examples of good influence marketing? I think it's about building a crop of talent that represents the brand really well. And they might be a little bit smaller. They might not be at the top of their game, but if they have genuine talent and they're making content people love, try to get in there at the beginning when they're growing and develop that partnership so that the brand becomes a really integral and meaningful presence on their channels. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. My definition of an influencer is anyone who can motivate an audience to take action. Now, that's a very broad definition. In fact, anyone can be an influencer or, more accurately, influential under those criteria. But when it comes to differentiating between influencers, we have to split hairs. And one category where my hair-splitting axe comes out is that of celebrities. I think there are two categories of celebrity influencers. Those who are celebrities and also have social media followings and celebrities who are such because of their social media followings. Regardless of the differences or similarities, Brittany Kagan works with both kinds. She is the head of talent partnerships and a partner at Portal A. It bills itself as a branded and original content company. What they do specifically is create branded content, so influencer and celebrity campaigns, commercials, and even long-form content for brands but they also create original content for streaming and media platforms like Netflix, HBO Max, and beyond. They work with celebrities, but also with those I might classify as influencers. If the creator is a good fit for what they're building, they work with them. I put my definitions to the test with Brittany when we caught up recently. She shared a lot of insight into how bigger celebrity-focused branded and original content talent scouts cast their projects, come up with ideas, and more. Our conversation revealed a bit more about what it's like to create and partner with creators at the highest levels with the biggest budgets. It was an enlightening conversation and one that should spark a few interesting ideas for us all. Before we hear from Brittany, the big event is fast approaching. The Influencer Marketing Show is April 27th in New York City. It's a great chance for you to come meet me in person and learn from some of the best minds in the business. But it's also an opportunity to meet and hear from Pete Kennedy, the president and founder of Tagger, our presenting sponsor. Pete and I will be joined on stage by Jenny Heinrich, who leads influencer marketing at Ketchum, as we discuss the metrics that matter for moving the needle in influencer marketing. Tagger is a great partner for isolating those success metrics and helping me report back to our clients at Cornette how their campaigns are doing and returning the KPIs and ROI they're seeking. Come see us both and hear more at the Influencer Marketing Show. See the full speaker and topic lineup when you get your ticket at jason.online slash imsfalls. That's jason.online slash imsfalls. And when you check out, use the code FALLS, all caps, F-A-L-L-S, and you'll get a 15% discount just for listening to Influence. That's jason.online slash imsfalls. 
And thanks to Pete Kennedy and the team at Tagger for helping bring Winfluence to you each week. How brands work with celebrity talent, and are they influencers who are in their own category? Those answers and more are coming up from Brittany Kagan from Portal A. She's next on Winfluence. Hey, gang, I've got something really cool for you. Time and place is everything, especially in marketing. But in today's age of a million messages per minute, not enough hours in a day, how do you really get your target audience's attention? Well, I do it with LinkedIn advertising. They have targeting tools that allow me to reach my precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means my ads are being seen by those who matter. Yours can too. LinkedIn advertising helps you speak to the right people at the right time. Stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships relationships and growing your brand. Scale your marketing and grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign just for listening to the Marketing Podcast Network. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim that credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Brittany, you're the head of talent at Portal A, which does both original and branded content. Now, what that means for our audiences is that you often play the role of casting director to connect influencers with brand projects. Is that about right? Yes, that is a very good summary, Jason. Thank you. Um, yeah, I work across branded and originals and we're really a company at Portal A that um, connects brands, talent, and content. And so that means that our projects come in all different shapes and sizes. We could be doing you know, a, a brand campaign with Google, working with 12 creators over the course of a year, or we could be working with one celebrity talent and pairing them with an interesting digital talent for a, one big video on YouTube that lives on the brand's channel. Or we're developing you know, a longer form series with a platform like Snapchat that's scripted or unscripted. And so I kind of work across both. Well, I'm looking at the roster of people you've worked with. I see Hassan Minaj, Steph Curry. I'm guessing you mostly work with people that I would actually consider celebrities, not necessarily influencers, but give us an idea of the range of people you work with. It's humongous. <laughs> we work with, I mean, we've worked with Stephen Curry, Hassan Minaj, Dave Chang, Emma Chamberlain, Laverne Cox, you know, lots of really influential talent. And these days, the definition of talent is obviously very gigantic. You know, you have people who are multi hyphenates, you have traditional celebrities and Oscar award winners who are very active on social media. So the definition really has become very expansive. Um, but in terms of the projects we've done, you know, we've worked with celebrities, the biggest YouTubers, Twitch streamers. Um, people who are big on TikTok and also emerging talent who have, you know, 10, 50,000 followers and have some really interesting um, story to tell or point of view. Um, so our projects really come in all shapes and sizes. And that's kind of what I love about this work and how, you know, working with a content first, talent first um, company allows us to kind of reinvent every time we have a new project. Um, and so I love getting the opportunity to work with really interesting people who have different talents and have different perspectives and um, collaborate with them to make cool stuff. Nice. Now, one of the reasons I asked that is I have this kind of definition that I kind of go by because I work more in the non-celebrity influencer content creator space although this show can encompass, you know, all of that because we're talking about influence, not influencers necessarily. Um, but I have this definition that kind of I use to distinguish between those two types. Um, I think there's a difference between someone who is famous and has social channels and someone who is famous because of their social channels. Is that a fair distinction? I think it is. Yes, I do. And I think people have the ability to cross over, particularly those who start with, you know, they're famous because of their social channels and they create these like huge media brands and products and businesses. So they definitely have, you know, the opportunity to become more mainstream and known for more. But I do think that is, that's a pretty good distinction. 
Yeah, I mean, when I when I think of somebody like Jake Paul, I mean, he became famous because he created content online and now he's a boxer and all the other stuff that he's doing. And so, I mean, kudos to him that that's a you know, that's a, a perfect example, I think, of someone who started out as a content creator slash influencer, if you want to call him that, and parlayed that into something bigger. But a Steph Curry is famous because Steph Curry can hit a three from anywhere in the building. Right. That's he's not an influencer in the traditional sense, but because mm-hmm. he's famous. He's got a lot of followers. So yes. let me put that through. Uh, let's put everything through that filter. And let me ask this. What's the difference in a project where you're working with someone who is famous and has channels like a Steph Curry mm-hmm. and someone who is famous because of their channels, like maybe a Celise Rose? Is the difference that you have to create the content for one and not the other? Or what are the differences there? That's a really good question. And there are a lot of different angles that I could answer through. Um, I would say that for the most part, the work that we do is very collaborative. So we're not often just casting someone in something. We're really trying to tap into their unique talents and interest areas and passions and you know, make something that's going to feel important and exciting to them and their audience. Um, But I would say when we're working with a bigger celebrity, it really depends on what we're doing. I mean, if it's, you know, putting someone in YouTube Rewind, that's going to be a quick appearance. We're not talking too much about it. I'm sure they and their team have specific ideas of what they would and wouldn't want that to be. But for the most part, you know, we're we're just kind of casting them in it. Um, Or for something like Let's Target, where we've had the opportunity to work with really awesome talent. Um, you know, we're collaborating with them to a, to a degree, we're sending them questions that help us develop creative around them a little better, that ensures that our director is asking them the right questions and giving them the right kind of thought starters on how to, how to engage with each other, what could be fun to bring up and talk about. So there's, I think for any talent, there is a degree of back and forth because, with our work um, being made for digital audiences, that connection and engagement is so important. And so, you know, and this generation, Gen Z, millennials, they are BS detectors. Like they know (laughs) when something is feeling cringy and they definitely do not hesitate to call that out. So I think for anyone, we're always kind of trying to do our best to tailor and dig into what that unique talent is. But I would say we're working with more of the creator types. And I I more often use the word creator than influencer, probably because our work is generally, you know, the bigger, splashier, more dedicated branded content versus like the influencer marketing shout outs and quick integration. So working with a creator, especially one who has such a unique and, um, you know, special way of going about things, they have certain types of videos they're always making, they have things their audience expects, Um, you know, we will, we'll work with them as closely as they will let us and as as much as they want to. Um, And there's always such a range of collaborative attitudes that creators and talent come with, you know, there are the people who, like, the lawyers will push for them to have approval on everything, but then they don't have any feedback or ideas, all the way to creators who have such a specific vision and brand and they get into it and they get excited about it and they like bring a lot to the table. So there's definitely a, you know, a spectrum of collaboration that happens based on, you know, what, what the opportunity is and who we're working with. I have a feeling if you and I were to sit down for a cocktail, we could tell some stories about some egos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's some, those, that's some <laughs> fun. All right, let, let's talk about the content for a moment. You've been part of some pretty amazing campaigns at Portal A. I love the 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 kettle one breaking the ice show, the work you did with Target. Both of those were branded content plays. Tell us how you attack the creative process when a brand comes to you and says, "Do something like that for me." Yeah, for sure. Um, so with our branded work, most of our projects um, will come to us through a brief. It might be a client we've worked with in the past, and it often is. Um, or, you know, it's a, a company that comes to us because they know that we're going to come with the big creative ideas and, you know, a really pres- pristine level of execution. Um, I think that's sort of what we're known for and what sets us apart is, 
you know, we have a team that just looks at every single detail. And we really from, you know, from the emails we send to the materials we create to the way we, you know, quality check our work, we were really doing our best at every stage to make sure we're not only, you know, hitting what the client wants, but kind of hitting our own creative and strategic goals. Um, So generally, you know, a brand will come to us and have a sense of, the messaging they you know the message the key messaging they want to hit um and you know a budget and a sense of the types of talent they'd like to work with and then we'll go back and we'll pitch different creative concepts or approaches sometimes it's a couple of different series ideas sometimes it's like here's a, a big idea big creative umbrella and here are a couple ways we can do it um and so we kind of sell through a creative approach and then um, that usually comes with some sample talent ideas we have for who would be best to reach this audience to execute this creative with. Um, and then we'll build a talent list that we'll go over with the client um, and really reserve a lot of time to refine and tailor the creative we've sold through to the talent we're working with and really work with them as closely as possible. So those kickoff calls with talent will be very robust. We'll have tons of questions for them um, just to get as much as we can um, to make sure that we're making something really special for their channels. And I think that that has allowed us to become, I think, a, a rare company that creator talent allows to produce and edit content that's going to go up on their YouTube channel and across their social platforms. Right. Uh, one thing that we at Cornette, we run into that is is an interesting conflict when I'm trying to talk to the client about what they want and the account team about how they see things and even the creative team that sometimes comes up with the core ideas here. And then I'm sort of charged with sort of orchestrating all of that together into some sort of influencer collaboration. I'm wondering when you're creating something original, at what point do you cast it? Do you start with a an ideal influencer or celebrity for the brand and build something around that? Or do you build something and then go find the right fit? Or is it kind of dependent upon the campaign? Yeah, it's it's definitely dependent on the campaign. I would say most of our branded work, you know, we're we're pitching creative and then going to get the talent that works. Of course, if we're working, you know, with Lenovo to promote laptops that are best for gamers, we we all kind of know we're going for gamer talent. Um, and uh, from an originals perspective, when we're developing original series that we're pitching to, like the Snapchats and formerly YouTube originals of the world or the streaming platforms like Netflix, Hulu, um, HBO Max, we will do it a number of ways. I mean, there there's probably a talent that we want to work with. And so we try to get them engaged and interested in a general concept we have um, and then really develop it out with them. Or, you know, we have a format that we love and we we really develop that in-house and then bring it to a creator. But for the most part, on the original side, um, we are taking a, a talent first perspective. And I think those are the most fun when you can get on a call with a creator and find an idea together that you're both excited about um, and that you know, allows the talent to do something bigger than they would be able to do on their own. And that allows us to be able to make something really special and have like a really unique voice at the center of it. So I had a, I had a content series, branded content series that I pitched one time. I'm going to pitch it to you, see what you think. Great. Um, um, This, this never, never got off the ground. um, And I don't know why, well, I do know why, but I, I don't, I, I, don't think it makes sense that it didn't get off the ground. So it was a healthcare company and this was back during the affordable healthcare act days and everything was confusing and consumers didn't know what to sign up for and how much they were going to have to pay if they had to pay. It was just complex and crazy. And so my idea was a series of 30 second, 60 second videos on YouTube and on the brand content channels, healthcare company, Mike Tyson explains healthcare. And I thought if Mike Tyson can explain it 
and no offense to Mike Tyson, he, he, I'm not not trying to insult his intelligence, but if he can explain it to people, then everybody can understand it. And that was right at the time when he was like, you know, the hangover and he was doing a lot of comedy stuff and it would be really funny. But at the same time, it would also be serious and kind of elevate him in people's minds. What, what would, would you have bought it? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, <laughs> well, as a producer, sadly, I am not the one that gets to buy things. Um, <laughs> if I were at Netflix, I would totally be able to buy things. But I think. I think it's interesting I, that that brings up kind of an interesting area where I think original series should go. You know, I think Gen Z especially is very interested in edutainment, like watching mm-hmm. something that is culturally fulfilling where they can learn, but also be entertained. So I think Jason, you're right. <laughs> you're right there with having like a big talent and something where people can learn from. I, like I do, I do think there should be more of that out there. Well, the 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 reason that the client gave me that they didn't want to do it was they said it's a great idea, it's really funny and clever, but he's kind of off brand. And I was like, well, mm. the other side of his face is open; he could put your. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually a good, a, a tricky <laughs> line to walk when when a brand is like, this is, you know, thinking about what's on brand for them versus the audience they actually want to reach. So they might Mm -hmm. see a gaming channel and be like, whoa, whoa, or a tech, that's not on brand for us. And yet this creator is fully hitting the demo that they're going after. So there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to traverse um, and lots (laughs) of different stakeholders all at all times. Well, thank thank you for entertaining my my old idea that never got bought. Um, I've I've thrown this question around a few times on this show, so I want to ask you too. Not long ago, we saw some headlines of quote unquote influencers being uh, hired as creative directors for mm. agencies and brands. Like you know, it's it's almost like agencies <laughs> gave up and finally realized they need someone who creates well on platforms like TikTok to do it for them. But the names associated with those headlines were Kendall Jenner, Jenner I think uh, Bella Hadid, Dakota Johnson. I don't think of them as influencers, and I don't think for a minute they are leading creative on a day to day basis. Was all that just good PR for them? Or is there something to that trend of brands bringing content creators into the fold? That's a good question. Um, Celebrity is something that kind of every brand is after. And the age old ask with all brands is like, oh, A-list talent, A-list influencer. Of course, they're going to want to be a part of my campaign. Like, this is so cool. We're launching this new product. And why wouldn't they want to be working with us? And because they don't think about how many of those opportunities these people get all the time. They don't think of, you know, the budgets that these people command. Um, And so I think that a lot of brands and, and streaming platforms, it's all about a list talent um, and getting the biggest names you can. And when you can't, you know, afford to get someone on a one-off campaign, they have to start thinking about, okay, what's a larger partnership that I can engage this celebrity on um, that will make it worth everyone's while. And so it's, I'm sure, you know, I know that brands and agents and managers all kind of want these longer term, like maybe not brands, but, you know, talent and their teams certainly want long term deals and, and revenue they can rely on. And, so I think, you know, that's kind of what they try to build. It's 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 kind of the same with, you know, with TV shows. If if you slap a, an A-list EP's name on the show, like that that's that gets you into the room. Um and so I think it's it's probably just a lot of a lot of that. Um that, that these brands really want the biggest names associated with with what they're they're doing. Sure. So as the industry matures and campaigns get more and more sophisticated, I think it's going to be harder and harder for brands to stand out with you know, their influencer creator partnerships. What do you think the keys that that you think will help brands do that in the coming years? What do they need to focus on to have not just successful partnerships, but stand out as strong examples of good influence marketing? I think it's about building a crop of talent 
that represents the brand really well. And they might be a little bit smaller. They might not be at the top of their game. But if they have genuine talent and they're making content people love, try to get in there at the beginning when they're growing and develop that partnership so that the brand becomes a really integral and meaningful presence on their channels. Um, So I think finding the right talent partners is and making it worth everyone's while tapping into what these creators are doing already. Because I think a mistake brands make is they come to talent, they're like, oh, we want to do this exact thing. We want you to say this exact thing. And they don't, you know, they don't have the best sense of what's going to work and what's going to get viewers excited. So really invest in the creators and what they're interested in, where where they want to grow, like what their fans are loving, really look at the content, what's doing well. Um, and have an openness to experimentation, you know, try something, try cool, creative, take big creative swings, um, take a bet on like a creator that is just doing something you genuinely love, give it a year, two years, and they're probably going to grow and blow up. Um, and so I think, uh, that, that to me is really interesting and exciting. It's easy to throw a million dollars at a big name. Um, but it's like, how are you going to do something that's unique and fresh, um, and, and really meaningful to both sides? Because ultimately, like you want partnerships that are mutually beneficial. I mean, that maybe that's the biggest cliche to say, but, (laughs) but it's true. It is. It is awesome. Brittany, where can people find you and portal a online if they want to connect? We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, um, I guess that that's the place. All our our content on YouTube, you know, uh, check us out there. All right. Well, we'll make sure those links are in the show notes. Brittany, thanks for being here and sharing some wisdom with us. Be sure to tell all your celebrity friends. I don't think they're influencers unless they're Mike Tyson and then tell him I was trying to get him a job. I'll send them all a note. (laughs) Group text. (laughs) I still think that Mike Tyson explains healthcare thing would work. Oh, well, you win some and you lose some. Folks, don't forget to drop us a rating or a review on your favorite podcast app. You should pause and do it now so you don't forget. Unless you're driving, don't pause and do it now. Pull off to the side of the road or do it when you park or whatever. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on an influencer marketing topic every so often, subscribe to my companion newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks and go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. Want to help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome? Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo and send it via email or just send a regular email if you don't want to record yourself. Send it to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening. And remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Greetings, you marketing podcast junkies. This is Tim Hines, the host of the Marketing Starter Podcast on MPN. On the show, I sit down with marketing thought leaders and pioneers from around the world and unpack how they use an entrepreneurial spirit to excel in all that they do. So tune in on your favorite podcasting platform every other week to find new ways of kickstarting your marketing career. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.